the first thing you'll need to do to get started is go into the app store here, the icon app store and just download Xcode and then open up Xcode. So you can see now we've got Xcode open. The next thing you'll need to do is just create a new Xcode project. So let's do that. And then we want to select app, hit next. Then we want to give our app um, a name. So the product name I'm going to choose here is football chance. You can call this whatever you want. So the team um, will be set to none for now because we're not going to associate it with a team because we're not going to upload it to the app store yet. That'll be in a future video. Uh, the organization is just going to be com.my YouTube channel name. So you can change this to com.billybob if you want to. The bundle identity file is the unique identity file that identifies the app and links it to the app on the app store. So this needs to be unique. So this bundle identity file, you probably cannot use it because it already exists. So you'll need to create your own and which is why you have the text field here for the organization identifier. The interface here will be storyboard, not Swift UI. Lifecycle will be UI kit and app delegate. Language will be Swift and not Objective C. And we'll make sure that these two check box these two check boxes are unchecked. So we're going to hit next. And we're just going to save this onto the desktop. Now you can save this wherever you want to save it. It's up to you. Hit create. Oh, I already have a project called Football Chance. So let's just call that Football Chance 2. And then we'll just save that onto the desktop, hit create, and then sweet. So this is a bug with Xcode, don't mind this. Um, sweet, so we've now got our first project set up. So the next thing we need to do is just do a bit of base configuration. So here, we're gonna change the deployment to iOS 13. So what this means is anyone on iOS 13 or above can download this app. If you're not, then you can't get it. We're going to change this to only iPhone, so on tick on tick iPad. We're going to delete main because we want to build this programmatically. So you have two options when you're building iOS apps. You can either build it programmatically or using storyboards. So storyboards, you can drag elements onto the screen like so, and you can basically see the UI as you build it. But the reason why and um, we're going to be building this programmatically is because Apps that are built programmatically, they're more dynamic and you can do um, <clears throat> more configurable things in code. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we're also going to do is we're going to choose the device orientation to be portrait. So we're just going to untick this and sweet. We've now got our first um, prompt configuration sorted for the application. So because we're going to build this programmatically, there's a few more things that we need to do. So we need to add this view controller onto the scene. So let's do that. So we go to scene delegate, we're just gonna remove this and type scene in here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the view controller that we have here onto the scene so you can see it. So to do that, we just need to type the following. So window is equal to UI window, window scene, scene, and then we're going to set the root view controller for this window to be the view controller that Xcode automatically generated for us. And then we're going to make this window key and visible. So make key and visible so you can see it. Now I'm just going to show you something. When I actually run this, you're actually not going to see anything. And I'll explain why in a second. So we've run this now <clears throat> by selecting a device on the drop down and hitting the run icon here. And as you can see, we get a black screen. So <clears throat> why is that? The reason why that is, is because we've not given this view controller a background color. So let's jump to this view controller. And in view did load, we just gotta say self dot view dot background color <clears throat> dot system red and we're gonna say system red because we're all Arsenal fans around here cool so now we have our view controller with a red background color so you're probably wondering why why we have to use a scene delegate and why we need to use a viewed load and what is an app delegate and I'm gonna explain that in the next bit where we talk about 
life cycles. So what is the app life cycle? So basically the app life cycle is the life cycle, or you could say the life of the application when it starts. So it's the order that things execute in. So when you open up your app for the first time, or when it runs for the first time on an iPhone, Mac, iPad, whatever device, it basically has a starting point. So that main entry point when you start with applications is the app delegate. So in the app delegate, you basically have a set of um, functions that are executed when an action is re is received so an application uh, an action could basically be like when the app has opened for the first time so when the application opens for the first time you have a function in there called did finish launching with options so what happens in that um function is it literally is to say hey i've just finished launching and these are some of the options that you have available so you would mainly use this function to do some sort of like setup and configuration. So let's say if you had to set up an SDK or you need to basically configure your database or whatever, your best bet is to place it in this function. There's also a whole load of other functions that come with the app delegate, such as stuff with responding to push notifications or checking if the app has gone into the background or the foreground. But I'll give you a link later on where you can actually see this and actually do some research yourself so after the app delegate you have the scene delegate so the scene delegate is what is used to basically set the scene or the window of what you see so you probably realize in the in the video where we actually set the view controller in the scene this is why we do it here because we want to basically say this is the view controller we want to present to the user when they open up the app for the first time. So you ever need to do some sort of like configuration with the scene and the way things look and whatnot, your best bet is to do it in the scene delegate. So after the scene delegate has been executed, you then basically have your view controllers. So if like in our example, we attach the view controller into the scene. So once we did that, when the view controller loads into memory, it's going to execute its own lifecycle functions. So we've not used this one yet and you've not saw it, but you will use it in later videos. But there's a function called load view. So load view is used when the view controller is about to be loaded into memory. And in this function, you could do stuff like configuration or setting up UI. And we also have another function called which you saw called view did load. So this view did load is similar to load view, but it's executed once the view has been loaded into memory. So that's the difference between the two. So with these two functions, um, you want to basically do your configuration for your view controller within these two functions here. There's also other functions as well that come with view controllers, such as view will appear, view did appear, view will disappear. And the more you get used to using the life cycle, you'll basically have different functions for different use cases. So just an example, with view did appear, you may want to refresh your screen every single time your view is about to be come onto a screen. So it would make sense to put your code in view did appear. Or similarly, you may want to clean up your view controller when it goes off the screen. So you would place that code and view will disappear. So my best advice for you would be to look into the app lifecycle documentation and get used to reading documentation as well, because that's the only way that you're going to improve with um, iOS development. So what I will do is I'll put a link in this video with some references for you so you can check them out. And in the next step, we'll carry on with building this app. That's everything so far. So like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in a bit. Deuces.